Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Demon Gate Beyond the Sea of Falling Skies expansion. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this exotic expansion for this apocalyptic fantasy role-playing game, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about weapons and armor. I was also going to talk about advanced combat rules, but I am going to dedicate a separate video for those. When it comes to weapons and armor, with open trade across the Amure, the Jade Sea and the Fabled Sea of Falling Skies, there are plenty of ways that the weapons and armor of the East would meet the merchants of the West. They find their way integrated into the culture of others by conquerors, by trade, or brought by explorers. The interesting thing about the new rules found within this expansion is that some of them can be applied to the weapons of the core rulebook and are interchangeable for the game master and players to modify as they see fit, applying additional special effects or upgrades to weapons due to critical hits can be a great way to add to the narration during combat. You should feel free as a game master to design weapons that are not in these books, and you are even encouraged to add modifiers to damage during narrative situations. For instance, if the adventurers are sharpening blades at the campsite, you can reward the players for these added role-playing details and storytelling moments with bonuses to, for example, damage. One thing you want to be careful with is creating weapons that are too powerful. One extra die of damage is good, but you shouldn't get too out of hand with extra dice, for they will come through abilities, talents and enchantments. There are also random tables in this expansion to use for random loots and finds and drops. Now let's talk about some of the weapons. In the case of ammunition, you have different types of arrows such as the firebomb arrow. You have bolts such as explosive bolts. You have fire lances such as the corrosive gas fire lance. You also have different types of shot such as the dragon shot or the grape shot. When it comes to artillery and siege weaponry, you have things such as the Iron Dragon or the Bombard. When it comes to axes, you have weapons such as the Crescent Battle Axe or the Spiked War Axe. When it comes to black powder weapons, there are Thunder Pistols and black powder muskets. Concerning flail, chain and whip weapons, you have objects such as the Blood Claw Flail or the spiked meteor hammer. Concerning knives and daggers, there is the claw dagger and the kukri. In the category of maces and hammers, we have the tetsubo and the tonfa. In the case of pole arms, spears and staves, you have the nakinata and the tiger fork. In the case of projectiles, you have things such as the horn bow or the wood elf bow. In the case of swords, we have the Gaelish Great Sword and, of course, the Katana. In the case of throwing weapons, you will find Tetsubishi Caltraps and the Hira Shuriken. In the case of weapon accessories, you will find things such as the Deer Horn Knives and the Nekode, which are basically claw fingers. Now, let's talk about armor. Armor is different all over the world. It is often made in different ways due to the cultural differences, religions, beliefs, and environmental restrictions. Some materials are found in abundance in certain locations, while certain steels need to be imported. To get your total armor value, you must add up all of the ratings of your armor together and add that to your toughness. Your total armor value, or TAV, is deducted from all attacks at you that can be soaked by armor. The TAV was created to speed up combat and to add realism while not over encumbering the narration of battle. When it comes to the armor table descriptions, you have details on armor type, the rating of the armor, that is, this is stacked for every piece of armor that you place upon your body. It becomes your TAV. You also have information on durability, weight, cost, modifiers, notes, and a percentage chance that the armor is available at the armory you are currently searching. 
let's talk about some of these pieces of armor. In the category of helmets, you have things such as the Gaelish horned helm and the war mask. In the category of shoulder and neck armor, you have the lamellar pauldrons and the sode, which are basically samurai pauldrons. In the category of arms and hand armor, you have things such as the steel bracers and the splint bambrace. In the case of torso armor, you have the beast armor and the kusari chainmail. In the category of waist and belt armor, you have the lamellar tassets and the shinobi sash with hidden pouches to store items. In the case of leg and foot armor, you have the iron serpentine and the tatame suneate. There are also shields such as the dark steel shield and the mirror shield. There is even a table detailing full suits and armor sets such as the oyoroi great armor and the mage armor. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part we are going to talk about advanced combat rules which include properties and traits of the weapons and armor that I talked about today. There are a lot of weapons and armor in this section of the book. If you are a fan of exotic weapons and armor, with many hidden things, traits to them, and extremely specialized ways in which you can employ these tools of war, you are going to love the ample selection here. Honestly, there are so many pieces, I don't know if you will be able to fully explore their capabilities or capacities in a single lifetime. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending right through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.